So here's heroic kill Jaden at uh, tank point of view for prop warrior. With positioning, you just want to make sure he's on the other side of this green circle right in the middle. I had to do a double take on that because for whatever reason I didn't pull him far enough and got impatient. So then I had to waste time getting him all the way back to where I wanted to tank him off the bat. And you'll see that I got pretty unlucky with the soak spawn. I needed to have to soak that one because it was in the fell claw cleave range. So that way someone wouldn't get one shot when they did soak it. So I just need to make sure because I have that debuff plus fell claws happening and the erupting reflection that I'm really aware of my damage. So this whole time I'm just staring at my health bar just to make sure that I don't spike down too far and need to pop shield wall and my legendary trinket just to make sure I can survive the extra damage. But I don't waste it if I don't need it. And that's what I did there. I didn't really need it. I was able to get by with using just demoralizing shout and last stand. So that was pretty good. So now that I don't have the boss, I'm just building as many ignore pains as I can. That way I can get a nice big pool for when I start taking damage again. That way it's not a huge spike. You see right here with Rupturing Singularity coming in, just don't forget that you can use your Charger Intercept to be able to get back on the boss as soon as possible if that does come up. And then for the Soak, I forgot to refresh my ignore pain, but always make sure you're using Spell Reflect for it, and then I'll always pop a second cooldown like Last Stand, my Archimon's Trinket, or if I have to Shield Wall just so I don't get one shot by that big damage um, if you're able to stack up an ignore pain pool like I had that's going to make it a lot easier to survive the hit but just don't forget to refresh it when you switch phases so now that phase 2 started every time he switches phases and he lands again you want to make sure you can get fell claws moved away from the raid as soon as possible not as big a deal here because you have a couple seconds to get him oriented before he starts doing fell claws but later in the fight once he lands he will immediately start doing fell claws and with this one you're going to have the erupting reflections coming in and that's going to be doing a lot of damage so make sure you're paying attention to your health bar and your cooldowns to be able to survive that if you do spike down pretty low i'm always spamming ignore pain on that just to make sure that i have a big pool of health that i'm not going to get one shot but if i do go through all my ignore pains and then start spiking that's when i'm going to pop last stand or Archimons, or even my second trinket, the one from Desolate Host, just so I can survive the extra damage. You also are going to have the tank add spawn. When you have Fell Claws and the tank add, you're going to take a little bit extra damage. So if you're the off tank, try to get him off the main tank and into the group. That way you can burn him down as soon as possible. And if you're the main tank and your off tank doesn't pull him off, just try to do whatever you can to mitigate the damage. Um, don't forget that Shield Block works for both the fell claws and all the damage that the boss and his reflection do so definitely make sure that's up 100 percent of the time when you have either of them on so now it's just back to the easy part once the ads are down and it's just taking the fell claws hits and having the group do damage you have rupturing singularity come in don't forget being a warrior that you're able to charge slash intercept in just to get right back to the boss he doesn't even move if you are able to time it quick enough and i just spam it straight off the bat fell claw starts back up pop shield block and then ignore pains and just try to take it all. You see this one didn't even spike me at all. Just the shield block and the ignore pain were able to keep it all. And always, 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 even if you have the boss, keep an eye out for missed soaks. Right there you see the group missed one. And I was able to use heroic leap to jump in and make sure that we didn't wipe. Because that would have been a sure wipe with the reflections up and a missed soak. And all it's going to do is add a little bit of damage to you. Which we have plenty of cooldowns to be able to take it. Just make sure you're aware of that. Before you start the dark phase, just take a look up at your health to make sure you're full up, especially if you had to take a soak, just to make sure you're able to survive through the dark phase. If you're low and your healers weren't able to top you off, use a cookie or a cooldown or something just to make sure you can survive it, because sometimes, as you can see here, you're an idiot and you walk past it like three times and you're not able to find Illidan to get the sight buff, and then when you finally find him, it's like all the ads that are close are dead, and then when you get onto the ads, make sure you use your stun to be able to keep them in the same place long enough to have your group kill them because there's nothing more frustrating than having that one that's at two percent and it teleports away and the whole group has to chase them down to find them when you get back into the next phase just group up with your group and then take the hit and then immediately get to the other side of them because he's going to do fell claws and make sure the group does not take that fell claws hit because that will definitely kill people so that is the most important thing once he stops that cast, you need to be on the other side of him with a taunt already on the boss. That way, he spins around and immediately fell claws away from the group. Then when he drops the flame orb, move away from it, and hopefully your mage doesn't drop the fire right on top of the boss like ours did. 
because that makes tanking a little tougher because you have to try to keep him out of the fire, but it's still manageable. Now that you're back doing this as a tank, it's your main responsibility to try to keep the group, especially the melee group, away from the lasers and try to position him away from them. So while you're taking the fell claws hits and trying not to get spun around by the portal pulling you in, also you got to keep an eye out for the lasers. As a warrior, it's a little easier for us because we can charge right back in if you do get hit by the laser, but do your best to try to not get hit by the laser and then help out with all the soaks that you can. So for phase three, it's just incorporating all the mechanics into one. Got to make sure you watch out for the fire. Got to make sure you keep him out of the fell beams, the fell lasers. And then also through that, you got to deal with fell claws and try to position him for your raid and not be hit with the lasers. So make sure because there's so much damage going out, so many people getting hit with lasers and stuff that your healers aren't solely focusing on you. So be aware of when you need to use your cooldowns um, and just try to alleviate some of the stress on them by alleviating some of the damage off yourself. That way they're able to heal the rest of the group and keep them up because this is a high damage section, especially with all lasers going out, people getting one shot by those. So just do whatever you can to help out and then survive for the rest of the fight and there's nothing else special after that.